Okay, so my sterling friends, uh, what we're going to do is try to understand how rocks turn into rocks when they were originally flesh and blood and bones and in this case a hair follicle. You see that? That's this. That's where the muscle attaches. That's where the sebaceous gland is right there. That's the root. And those two little dots are the vein and artery. And this is completely transitioned. Now, they don't always do this completely like this. Sometimes they turn into actually, they look just like they did when they were alive. It looks just like a chunk of meat you could throw on a grill. Shish kebab. All right, sometimes the bones, which this is a head of a bone, just turn into what they call mudstone. Inside where the marrow was, it's blacker, it's darker, it's because it's got more iron, because that's where the marrow is. Other than that, that's a bone, it's like a, like a wrist bone or, you know, that type of thing. And you got, I believe, the nerves come up through there. You got the same as we have on us, bone forming, the um, ligament that holds it to this, they rock back and forth and do all that kind of stuff on a ball and a little shaft and another ball on that side. And this is a tiny, you know, it's kind of a small lung. And this one here, everything washed out of it. All the blood and everything. All of this is right now is like the spongy part of the, the, the body of a lung. All the blood's gone. Most of the stuff. The, the blood is in here deep. If you go inside, there's still plenty of blood in there. But right on outside, all of these little pocky sparts are where there was alveoli, which are little holes where all the air goes through. Now, this is also oh, a lung. That one I had DNA tested and CAT scanned. 100% certainty it's a lung. And it's, the DNA was excellent quality. Now, you see the flatness of the, this because this died flat in the flood, on top of a heart. The heart was here, and that's why you have this curve. That's called the aortic arch. It just laid right in against that. Created that curve as it died and just solidified in that position. And these things are saturated with blood inside, as I'll show you. This is the, the fascia, the coating, and all that stuff is still on there. If that had washed out, you're going to have one like this. You see that one? You see all these little dots? There was blood coming out of here. It's actually blood coming out of here. And these are the alveoli, these little round spots. They're these. Now, here's the key. When this, hold on a second. All right, sorry about that. Now, here's, th these are both lungs. This one has all the rubber bag still surrounding it, the pleura. This one is stripped down to this. This one still has all that pleura around it. Now, it's saturated with blood. You see all the blood down here? And you, I, I go deep inside and get the blood out of there. Very careful, not contaminated. It came back excellent quality DNA. It was just virtually solid red blood. Now, this did have actual red blood coming out of it. And it, it, see that latch? They all have that latch on the bottom. That's the same latch as this. It's like this little flap here. They all have that. Even once, once you strip it down. And it, through this... Through these two spots, I believe there's two little tabs going through here. The vein and the artery or something like that works with the, the fascia, the uh, interstitium that was on here. And I have the same thing, like even in this one. This is a latch on this one. I know you're not going to be able to see it. If I had it in a microscope, you could. But this is basically like that latch right there. And there's two little the tiny dots at the end where the 
everything comes together and all the fluid gathers in here and has to squirt right through those two little dots. And I think these are the dots at the end of that fascia, interstitial. Now, whoops. All right, so th that came back with just blood coming out here. And here's the blood. All right, that's before I washed it off. But, you know, there's no sense testing it. I mean, it's a lung. It's just that's what it is. Now, is it humid? I, probably. It seems that all, all, almost all the stuff I have here was human. Now, whether there was a whole batch of them tried to hide out here, do something, and they all got preserved really in an exceptional manner, and the huge things, little things. You know, I have, well, hold on. Right there, look at that. That's a fingertip. This is from the very back here, which, you see that round spot? That's where it bumps up against the bone, vein and artery, coming up to feed the, and they have tons of blood. This is the fingernail, and it's three feet long from the very end to the very tip of the front, three feet. That's big. That's 36 times bigger than my fingertip, which is like one inch. Now, I had to break this piece off to get blood, which I did. And here's what the blood came out. Uh, right here. Alright, this came out just like a scab, just it peeled right off. It was not like fractured. Came off just about like this. And underneath, there's just saturated with blood. All the blood you could want is down in there. And it was clean, it was because this was capped, it had it capped off forever. I smashed this to get this off in order to get down in the blood because I couldn't get anything. This is hard, and I, in my paper I put down, this stuff is so hard, it could be a Mohs scale of like nine, which is like carborundum. Hold on a second, I, th I have that piece right here. Hold on, don't go anywhere. All right. You can tell when something's hard. You hear that? That's that piece right there. It goes together somehow. All right. That's it right there. I broke another piece off here. You see that? That's just like a scab. That's the thickness of the skin. That's this. And these are the sweat pores. And that's one fingerprint ridge. This is wide as my finger. And that's the thickness of the skin. And it's tough. This is called grip skin. And you see, this is there's, there's no fracture here. It's just lifted off, just like this. It's just like a layer of a scab. But it's the guy's skin. And again, this is about 36 times bigger than me. And I, there's other body parts of him out there, too. Big toes like this. I mean, it's just, it's incredible. I don't know why this particular, well, I do know why, because it was a basin, and it was, endurance, it was a Triassic situation. They say, oh, no, no, Triassic happened 250 million years ago. No, absolutely not. The whole world was covered with the red bed, gray clay, black cap when we almost got hit by Venus and it is right here on the surface of the earth. It's right in my backyard. I didn't have to dig for this. I didn't know how to even dig. And I came up with all this stuff. Giants. Human giants. All over my property. And as this was a fingertip I had it cat scanned and you see the little where that was where the fingernail was. It's gone. And that's where tendons lock in on the side. And Jesse Grant and Associates did the seven CAT scans for me, 2D and 3D, no charge. And I will be forever thankful. This is from the back of the fingertip. That right there is 
I believe, where the vein was, that little hole, and that is the tendon. And they run up basically in the right area. The same thing here. You see that little hole down there? I believe this was where the artery was because the arteries flush the blood out much easier. Than, and these are black, so I don't know. It could be one or the other, but it doesn't matter. They're both tendons. They're both blood supplies or returns. And that's where the bone was. And you could see it in the CAT scans. Not well, that's the problem. With the mud fossils, you get a lot of transition. You don't see a whole lot of difference inside to the outside. It's a subtle transition. You can see it, but it's not easy. Okay, my friends, I wrote a paper 10 years ago. It was called Giants in Myth, History, and Religion. A friend of mine is putting them into little books uh, you know, just about my papers, nothing special. And it's, I have nothing to do with the books whatsoever. I don't profit from them. I don't pay, do anything with them. He takes, he just used my paper and made books about it. But everybody now is starting to go around and look at these anomalies on Earth, which I was explaining in these books about these features on Earth. Nobody can explain. And they relate to giants that were in history and religion and myth. We always considered him crazy. But look at the size of this. That's a guy standing there. This is a POV channel. These blocks, nobody can explain this except me. He goes out and he finds these. And there's nothing he can do to explain these. So he's going to try to make an explanation. All right, I'm just going to play this real quickly. He's searching for these gigantic anomalies on Earth. And he says, spends late night searching for massive, almost geometrically perfect blocks. How did this happen? Nobody can explain this. Stone. There he is. The size so of I these went blocks. There and came to realize the most incredible part of this place was what lie in between the blocks. And left me convinced that this this might be the coolest thing I've ever found on Google Earth. All right, I'm going to explain to you what he is looking at here. And I can tell you exactly what it is. What he's looking at is cells and the cell junctions, right? plasma membranes, adherons junctions. These are the different types of cell junctions. Now, there's different types of cells in your body. It depends on where it is in the body. However, what he's looking at is the square blocks, and I'm not sure what kind of cells they are. We'll dig into that a little deeper. But all I wanted to do was introduce the fact that I did write about this stuff years ago, giants in myth, history, and religion. They are part of the earth. They're not just little bitty giants. 10, 12, 20 feet tall. These things are just staggeringly enormous. And as Jesus Christ himself said, the earth is a corpse and a body, bodies. And it's true. Nobody can deny it anymore. All they can do is dismiss it. Just to say, oh, we, we, we're smart. We know all geology don't pay any attention to this stuff. No, pay attention to what's in front of your face. That's about all I have to say. I'm going to be doing a very long discussion about my original thoughts of the giants in myth and history and religion. That's 10 years ago. Since then, I have uncovered things that are so staggering, that, and not only here on Earth. It's not just here on Earth. The things they wrote about in these ancient texts were all true. As far as I can determine, these myths were not myth. They were historical documents. All right, I love you all.